Hello, boys and girls. I am going to read The Little Christmas Tree today. Um, it is written by Carl Ruman and illustrated by Ann Moeller. Let's see what The Little Christmas Tree story is about. Once there was a fir tree that, glue, that grew at the edge of a forest. Behind it, the great pines towered, and an oak tree spread its shadow far and wide. Birds built their nests in the pines. Squirrels ate the nuts and acorns. Children had even built a tree house in the oak. But nobody, not even a mouse, thought the fir tree was useful. It was just too little. The little tree hated being so small. It felt as if nobody took it seriously. Someday I'll show them, the fir tree thought, but it didn't know how. Here's the little fir tree. The hare got a running start and took a great leap right over the fir tree. The second hare did the same. The little tree was green with anger, but no matter how high it stretched, it couldn't even reach the hare on their bellies with its needles. Just you wait, it thought. Someday I'll show you. It just didn't know how. Another time, a hedgehog came by. She was in a terrible mood. She'd been rummaging through the nearby house's compost pile, and now her spines were all messy, covered in potato peelings, bread crusts, even a salami wrapper. She looks all tangled up, huh, hedgehog? When he saw the fir tree, she exclaimed, Oh my, that tiny little tree is just the right size. And before the fir tree could pull back its needles, the hedgehog scooted in amongst its branches and scraped off all the muck. The fir tree trembled with fury. Just you wait, it thought, wobbling its tender green tip. Someday all of you will see what I can do. But it still didn't know how. In autumn, the air grew chilly. A cold wind blew down the branches and, and stripped the leaves from their trees. Only conifers, like the pines and the fir tree, stayed green. The animals were out enjoying the last of the sunshine before snow covered the fields. And then came winter. Snow fell for three days. The little tree stood mournfully at the edge of the meadow. Every once in a while, it would shiver the snow from its branches, so it didn't completely disappear in a drift. That very afternoon, Peter came back to the forest with his parents. They pulled a sled with a big box on it. From the box, they took wonderful red and deep blue glass balls and hung them on the fir tree's branches. The tree looked great. He, they took great care not to drop a single ball. There wasn't enough room for all the balls, so Peter sent, set the rest in the ring around the base of the tree. Finally, Peter fastened a gold star on top. The star was quite heavy. But the fir tree was so proud that it didn't bend a bit. Wonderful, said the father. Really, just the perfect size for you, said the mother. It's the most beautiful Christmas tree I've ever seen, Peter said. Looks pretty neat. The next day, all the animals came to see the little Christmas tree. They were in awe by its beauty. The little fir tree knew it had finally showed them that it was indeed just the right size for something truly special. Every year at Christmas time, Peter came back. Every year, Peter and the fir tree grew a little bigger. But no matter how tall the tree, even when it towered over Peter's head, it stayed just the right size, and the fir tree remained the most beautiful Christmas tree 
for Peter his whole life long. Look how big the tree is now. And Peter still comes to decorate it. Look at Peter up in the tree. He has gray hair now. The end.